Good afternoon, YouTubers. What we are going to do today is review a shotgun. I'm sure there's probably a hundred reviews of this shotgun on the internet already, but we thought we would add another one. But we're going to give you a two for today. We're going to talk about Turkish shotguns. Um, let's start with the first part of this story. I have four sons and we all shoot guns, including myself. That makes five. Add in my wife, that makes six. So, as you might guess, it's a very expensive hobby. We could go and buy high-end guns, two, three thousand dollars a piece. And what would happen with that is by the time I got done buying all the guns for everybody to go shooting, we wouldn't be able to afford the ammo to shoot with. So, what we end up doing is we end up looking for areas we can save money. One is the hardware, the shotguns themselves. Uh, we could grab any shotgun out of the vault and have some fun with it. But we've chosen that we enjoy shooting over-unders, especially since two of my sons shoot trap uh, on a league as well as on a team. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we, uh, let's start with our Khan shotgun. This is one that I purchased, I'm guessing, 15 to 20 years ago. It was on sale at one of our local sporting goods shops for like $300. Just pulling a number out of my head, but I think that's about what it was. This was a Khan shotgun, and it's a $300 shotgun made in Turkey. It was a very tight gun, hard to open. When we first got it, everything seemed tight. I didn't like the gun. Uh, my son started shooting trap on the high school trap team, and he says, Dad, I want to shoot the Khan. I figured, well, what do you got to lose? Hopefully he can shoot well with it. Um, when it comes to shooting trap, we kind of live under the belief that um, it's less than 10% hardware that gets you accuracy, and the rest of it is 90 plus percent the shooter. So uh, I guess the theory there being is, is you don't need to spend thousands of dollars to go out and shoot trap on a team. So here's a $300 shotgun have no clue how many thousands of rounds have been through this gun, but a lot. And it's getting a little beat up, some nicks and scratches, but let's look it over. First thing we do when we pick up any gun, I don't care where it's been in the safe, in your pocket, wherever it's been, check it. Make sure there is nothing in there, especially if you're gonna be demonstrating it any kind of a way or handing it off to someone else. Point being is clear it. Then, Make sure your safety is on. Plain and simple, nothing more than that. Clear your gun. I, I, I'm kind of a safety nut because uh, we've not had an accident and we really want to kind of keep it that way. You hear about accidents and um, I would like to not be one of those that's involved in them. So clear your gun. Okay, now safety aside, let's talk about the gun itself. It's, it's an okay gun. The woodworking is acceptable. Uh, you can tell that they've actually airbrushed striping into it to kind of give it a maple appearance and then stained it. So, made it look good. As you can see, it's getting nicks and scratches all over it. The bluing was a little iffy on the questionable side. Uh, let's call it rough. They didn't spend a lot of time uh, finishing the barrel and giving it that what I would call the beautiful browning look. Uh, browning used to be really uh, good about making sure that their bluing was perfect and their metal was awesome. Uh, but I guess in Turkey, and they're trying to crank these out, their philosophy is, is build the highest quality gun at the lowest price they possibly can. Um, what we learned from this, just by looking over many of these, this one, the Khan, K-H-A-N, you don't see these around very often, uh, but we researched it. They also make some very expensive guns. Uh, we haven't found how we can buy them in the United States but they get into the thousands um, and built for trap shooting, competitive shooting. So knowing that, I had to believe that there was some level of quality that went into these, as well as seeing that this one here has been shooting competitively now for over a year with no faults. We've had nothing break off, fall off, come loose. Ah, take that back. I think we did have to tighten the stock once. That, in my opinion, is acceptable. Um, we have taken it all apart. We've cleaned it up, lubricated it. Uh, we can't clean the bluing up without re-bluing it. It's just a coarser blue than um, I think it should be, but it's better than most guns that aren't even blued nowadays. So, I am going to say that this is a decent shooting gun. 
Uh, great value if you can pick a con shotgun, double barrel over under, uh, up used uh, for a couple three hundred dollars somewhere, uh, and you have a son or daughter that's going to be out trap shooting, you could get by just fine. Uh, this has competed in uh, uh, local competitions as well as um, state and national competitions, so done very well. I, I have to. Uh, I have to blame my sons for being very accurate shooters, and they can pick up virtually any piece of hardware like this and perform well. So buy a gun that works for you, one that you can afford, and one that you still have money left over to buy ammunition so you can keep shooting. So enough of the con, great gun. Uh, comes with a uh, manual that has poor translation, so the grammar is bad, but you can function with it. Comes with a set of chokes and a choke key. So there's your con. 20 year old gun, works great, loves shooting it, and the kids will probably shoot it again this year on the trap team. So, after doing a little research, I found out that these Turkish manufacturers manufacture a lot of these, and they put a different brand name on them. What's really cool is, is the brand name, I think, I don't know, I think, dictates the pricing. So do they put more quality into the ones that they're selling to you at a higher price? I cannot answer that question. We will tell you soon though, after we field test this one for a year or two. But for now, what I'm gonna tell you is, is we found some direct similarities to the TriStar. Comes out of Turkey and according to the map that we're finding on Google, comes out of a plant right in the same area as this one. So, what's really cool, 20 years later, we're buying this one here for the same price we bought this one for, $342 at Walmart. You can buy that TriStar at a lot of different gun dealers um, and a lot of different prices. We just needed a gun. Uh, here's what's really interesting and it's kind of funny. I get paid every two weeks. Every time I get a paycheck for some reason there's bills that have to be paid. I had a unique thing happen. I had all my bills paid and I had a leftover paycheck doesn't happen often. So what do I do? I decide I better go buy a gun. So, and of course, being the value hunter that I am, I thought, well, let's run up to Walmart. They don't, the Walmarts in our neighborhood do not sell guns, so we had to drive out of town. So we got there, and I just took one look at the TriStar, and I thought, for that price, I will buy one. We'll take it, we'll try it. If it's junk, oh well. We'll go back to using the con. So, figured, let's do a review. I'll show you the gun, how it came. Walmart, for some reason, all their guns, they tape their packages in red, and I'm sure if you know why, you'll probably post it on our, uh, uh, on our, uh, uh, yeah, whatever. So, comes with a manual, as you might guess. And what's interesting is, is it has some very similar, uh, great, uh, tight similarities to this. I mean, it's larger, and they obviously put a little more money into print, but as far as the wordage, very similar. Also comes with a nice little diagram if you need parts. Tricky part is, I don't know where you're gonna buy the parts. My opinion on this one, and my plan for it is, is I bought this, we're gonna run it hard for a year. I'm gonna buy another one. Now, we have a parts gun. So for what we can buy them, $340, I can afford that for parts sitting on the shelf. So, we'll take it out. I was actually very impressed when I saw it. Let's first start with the chokes. If I can remember how this opens up. There we go. They were extended chokes. I don't know if you've shopped extended chokes, but they're quite costly. They can be up, uh, you know, 50, 60, as high as $100 a piece for an extended choke. But to get them factory with the gun was valuable. The unique part was, as I spun them out of the con, we screwed these into the con and they fit perfectly. You tell me if there's uh, some connection between these two manufacturers. Um, well, I'm stating that part about these two manufacturers. This is Khan, K-H-A-N. I looked at the end of the box, and on one end of the box, it says TriStar, Upland Hunter. If I go to this end of the box, it says Kral, K-R-A-L, made in Turkey. So it just clarifies Kral's manufacturer. So of course, I look for Kral and Khan on the internet, and I find their factories very close, possibly the same factory. So then, let's disassemble, or unpackage this. This is where I was quite blown away, especially when we look at the pricing. Let's take a look at the finish here. 
I would say they spent a little more time and invested a little more into the polish. And when I say polish, I don't mean actually polishing it up, but uh, overall, uh, the finish. They did a much nicer job on the finish. They made the receiver out of aluminum, I believe, uh, compared to steel. I have to believe the steel is a better choice. Uh, but if you're looking for a lighter gun and something that has a two-tone that stands out, the aluminum might be the option. This gun, right out of the box, is very tight also, as well as this one was. This one now, you just open it, it drops open. Uh, they added a recoil pad, which this one did not have. And I find that as a bonus. It did not add much to the length. They actually cut the stock down a little bit to keep our, our pull the same uh, on both guns. So right there, you can see the obvious similarities. Uh, the hinge pin, they left it as a rivet style, opposed to machining it smooth. They put the same level of decorations in, a little less on the con, but very similar. You look at all the in, in, insets and end cuts, everything is almost identical. The difference I found right off the bat, though, was your trigger frame. Uh, I, we have not disassembled the two of them side by side to see how much the uh, uh, sear and uh, hammers are as far as identical on the inside, but I got a feeling that they're the same. We can flip it up to the top and you can see your barrel selector and safety identical. Now bear in mind a lot of over-unders have similarities between them. It's almost like they took one blueprint and threw it to every company and said you make it look uh, a little different. Um, Inside, that's where we'll probably find our difference. I've heard some reviews of people saying that the TriStar uses softer metals. I can't verify that. Um, it's very possible. I also look at it too as compared to going out and buying a higher end gun, I can buy five or six of these and throw them away and you just look at them as a consumable. Uh, and that's actually the attitude I'm taking on them. If I get one year out of them, I'm good with that compared to going and spending thousands on a gun that we know we're going to wear out. So we're going to grab the barrel here. I'm going to pass this box off to my son. TriStar did not pay me to show that logo, so TriStar. Send me a check. <laughs> I'm just joking. I do this for fun. All right, so we pop the barrel out. I'm going to pass that over to you as well. And. a lot of similarities in our forearm. Obviously the newer one, I can see they've done a much nicer job with finish as well as in hardware. There appears to be a little more steel and reinforcement holding this together. I don't know if that's good or bad or what the reasoning was, but it is how it is. Uh, the one thing to remember too on your forearm and the reason that it needs to be relatively strong is that's what resets your hammers. That's what cocks it. So it has to have some level of durability. This one's lasted 15 or 20 years, as well as a year plus competitively. And I'm not saying the forearm's the first thing to break, but we have some that have broken forearms, not the same brand. All right, barrels. Let's lay those side by side. I don't know if the camera can get all that in there. Did we get a good look at the forearms? At the, I mean, the quality of the wood, I think, is far superior, but both still seem to be decent guns, regardless of how well they did their woodwork. Now, let's get our barrels out here. The bluing, if I had to say, uh, they did a little better finish now than they did 15 years ago or 20 years ago. Uh, the biggest thing I like is, is they put a, a glow sight on the front. That's always nice if you're going to try to gain a quick target opposed to looking at a brass bead. Brass bead, I do like the old classic bra brass beads, but when you're out shooting and you got a little bit of light, it is really nice to have a red dot that you can really focus on your target. And I do say that the one inch extension on the uh, uh, chokes is a bonus uh, in all cases. So, barrel quality, as far as barrel size, so far out of the box, everything identical. I have not tried interchanging them. Um, don't know if I will, but I got a feeling that we're gonna find that they do fit each other. Um, I should state we have not shot this one yet, so we will probably do a follow-up or an addition to this video after we have shot it. So, let's put it 
together. Everything's a little snug, a little tight. One thing I noticed right off the bat, weight. This one is considerably lighter than our con, probably because of the aluminum. Possibly there could be some differences in the wood. The first thing we noticed, extremely tight to open. Now you saw that open relatively easily. That's after lubricating it and cracking it open probably 50 or 60 times while keep adding lubricant. And that made it so it became tolerable to open and close. We did put some spent shells in there and pop the triggers once uh, on each one to see how well it reset the hammers. And it is tight right now. I have a feeling that's going to loosen up quite quickly once we get a couple days out on the range shooting. So overall, my review on this gun from what I see, and I'm going to use the shooting characteristics of the con to tell you that we're content with how the con shoots, I have to imagine the TriStar, which appears to come out of the same factory, appears to come out of the same factory. It, if it didn't, it came off the same blueprints. So uh, I have to believe that this one will shoot as well. Uh, we will probably do some modifications. I plan to go buy another one, and that one we're going to start cutting apart and playing with. Uh, the one thing we do want to do is we want to make sure that we can make an adjustable comb here. So we'll be cutting the stock across here and elevating here so we can raise and lower our comb. We also plan to cut off, or I'm sorry, remove the uh, butt stock and put an adjustable butt stock in because we just need to do a little tweaking on our shooting for uh, uh, our boys so they can uh, hopefully uh, pick up an extra clay or two each week. Um, but my review, $340. It's really tough to beat the price. Uh, like I say, I plan to buy another one. I might even buy another one after that. Um, we don't need, you might, but we don't. We don't need to spend thousands of dollars to go out and have fun shooting. I look at it as I would rather have a lot of guns that we can take out and polish and be proud of and go out shooting. Uh, like I say, we have four sons uh, and my wife as well as myself. So when we go shooting, it's, it sounds like a war zone. So a lot of guns, a lot of ammo. Um, and the whole key to it is, is to be able to afford the hobby so you can do it more often. And to be able to do it more often, I recommend these two affordable shotguns. Um, if you buy one, you're not happy with it, bring it to me. I'll probably buy it. Uh, so there you have it. I am sold on this TriStar. Uh, and I'm basing that information on the history of the con that has been very successful. Thank you, YouTubers, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if there's any questions you have on it, or you want to see more, uh, or if I did not answer a question on a basic review, um, let me know, and we'll do what we can. Thank you much.